Although Windows Azure includes many services, the services that fall into the categories of compute and storage are generally of most interest to researchers. A wide variety of computing resources are available within Windows Azure, with options such as websites, virtual machines, databases as a service, and Hadoop as a service even. In this video, we'll take a more detailed tour of Windows Azure's features and the services it provides for developers and researchers. In particular, we will look at Azure's ability to host virtual machines, automatically provision popular website frameworks, and build robust cloud services. The first Azure service we'll talk about is its virtual machine hosting. If you're familiar with traditional hosting, this is probably the feature that feels most familiar and consistent with what other hosting providers provide. You can stand up a virtual machine with either Windows or Linux, and then you can connect via remote desktop or SSH. You can run any workload, just as if it were a physical machine that someone had to install in a rack somewhere. These virtual machines enable you to be admin on the box. They are durable, meaning that if you reboot the virtual machine, it is still there with all of your changes and data that you stored on the disk. If you want to run SQL, you can. If you want to install a NoSQL server, you can do that too. If you want to run SharePoint, you can do that. Virtual machines provide ultimate flexibility to do whatever you want to do on the computer. It also enables you to do what we call virtual private networking. With virtual private networking, you can deploy virtual machines in the cloud and group them together so they are part of their own private network. You can then connect them back to your corporate network if you have one, and establish a VPN secure tunnel to link your machines running in your own corporate environment or your own research lab to the virtual machines in the cloud, making them feel like they're part of one large connected network. So there's lots of flexibility in the compute side as well as in the networking side. When you mount a drive on a virtual machine, it is triply replicated. If one goes bad, Azure automatically creates a replica. From your virtual machine's perspective, it never knows that an issue actually occurred. The mechanism for implementing this is much deeper than we have time to go into in this video, but it is all dependent on Azure storage services. Another thing that is nice about the Windows Azure storage solution is that we have support for continuous geo-replication. What this means is that whenever you save something in the storage system, in the background, Azure will automatically replicate that data to another data center. Azure guarantees that these data centers are several hundred miles apart, so that in the case of a natural disaster or a complete data center failure, you can still be ensured that a copy of your data exists somewhere else. You don't have to configure this or anything. It's automatically enabled by default. You can turn it off if there are policy reasons why you wouldn't want your data moving to a different place. But the end result is that you can deliver more robust solutions with even greater integrity, all automatically, because it sits on top of Azure storage subsystem. The second Azure service we'll talk about is the Azure Website Service. One simple way to get started on Azure is to create a website to communicate your findings and collaborate with other researchers. Later, you can expand your usage by adding other services as applicable to your objectives. Although journals still have a place in the scientific community for peer review, many researchers are sharing their work publicly on the internet using blogs or content management systems to stimulate more discussion or to share their data. If you already have an existing website or web application, you can easily move it into Windows Azure. Windows Azure Websites is a managed service that you can use to run websites and web APIs. It enables you to quickly stand up web applications and sites on the internet. Furthermore, the underlying environment and operating system is managed for you. This not only is very convenient, it's actually more secure because the Azure security team can identify potential vulnerabilities and fix them much more rapidly than if you had to constantly be monitoring security mailing lists all the time. All you need to do is just say that you want a website, provide the domain name, copy in the content, and Azure does the rest. You don't have to worry about or think about spinning up virtual machines, configuring servers or infrastructure. You can simply focus on building and deploying web-based applications. You can literally deploy it in seconds. Azure websites are multi-language. You can build websites using ASP.NET, Node.js, PHP, or Python. They're multi-platform. You can use any tool or any operating system to build these sites, including Windows, OS X, and many flavors of Linux. You can also use a variety of technologies to deploy your website. What is nice about Azure websites is that not only does it enable you to get going very quickly, but it also allows you to get going for free. The pricing for Azure websites starts at free, perpetually free and then you can scale up as you need more capability. You can scale up Azure websites by using reserved instances for higher performance and isolation, and you can scale out as your website becomes more successful and you have increased load. 
I've talked about virtual machines and we've talked about websites, so now let's look at cloud services. Cloud services is another model we support for building scalable applications. It enables a broader set of workloads than Windows Azure websites while providing a more automated management than Windows Azure virtual machines. These applications are extremely scalable automatically just by the nature of how you build them with cloud services. They can support one to hundreds or even thousands of cores. They support not only web-based deployments, but also multi-tier architectures where you might have a combination of front ends, middle tiers, as well as virtual machines running as part of the overall application. Windows Azure Cloud Services also supports automated application management. So it is really easy to deploy, scale out, isolate, and recover from any kind of hardware failure. Additionally, there is support for automatic updates of the operating system. So what is a cloud service? At a high level, an Azure cloud service consists of code that implements various kinds of service roles, which fall into one of two categories, the web role and the worker role. Web roles are front-facing web servers that respond to inbound HTTP requests. Worker roles are virtual machines that manage computation and data to support the needs of the application. These roles communicate by using a robust messaging queue. When you build an application factored into this kind of model, Azure can scale these up and down as traffic and compute demands change. We will look at cloud services in more detail in our Azure Cloud Services video. In addition to the compute services for deploying and running your code, Windows Azure also provides a number of application building blocks. These are managed services that we run that provide a lot of value so you can avoid standing up the infrastructure for common capabilities. You can always stand up virtual machines and put anything you want in them. But in a lot of cases, you'll find that we have built-in services that deliver or are delivered by our partners. What's cool is that you can use any of these services with a virtual machine, with a website, or with a cloud service, so you have flexibility in how you consume them. All of these services can also be used for multiple programming languages. We now have, as part of our developer center on windowsazure.com, support for multiple different programming languages, including .NET, Node, Java, and PHP. One of the new languages that we're now enabling is Python, with a complete SDK and its own dev center. For each of these, we provide libraries that you can consume that call into the REST APIs that we expose for the building block services. You can always call the REST APIs yourself directly. All of the libraries are hosted on GitHub under an Apache 2 license, so you can both see the source and contribute back to the source. The Azure execution models we've looked at are quite different. For a researcher or scientist building an application, it can be difficult to decide which is appropriate for their use case. We'll now take a look at some example use cases and what works well for each. In general, you can think of a hierarchy that lets you choose along a slider between control and convenience. Virtual machines give you the most control and are the most general approach for running whatever existing code you may already have. However, they also require the most configuration and management for scaling. Websites are very easy and lightweight to set up, but they're generally only appropriate if your application needs fall within the capabilities of one of the existing web frameworks or content management systems that are already supported by Azure. Cloud services strike a balance between capability, scale, and convenience, but require a bit more work to set up than a simple website using an existing web framework. All three let you build scalable, reliable applications in the cloud. Virtual machines are true infrastructure as a service. For instance, if you need persistent Linux virtual machines running on some powerful hardware. You can also build Linux clusters this way, or you can extend your own infrastructure into the cloud. These are full-fledged machines running on the internet, and you can do whatever you want to with them. Another great use case is for disaster recovery. If something happens to your existing machines, you can spin up a virtual machine in Azure and be up and running again very quickly. Many times, a simple website is really all you need. Whether it's a WordPress blog or a private photo gallery that you fully control, Azure Websites is a fast way to get these set up. There are many existing application frameworks already available, Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, and the like, and these are literally just seconds to spin up. It's interesting to note that there are entire companies out there whose business model is to help you configure and host these kinds of software, whereas on Azure, it's just a feature that is a few mouse clicks away. Azure Cloud Services may seem like a fairly sophisticated application architecture for research scientists, but the capability that it provides 
is very useful for a large number of common scientific workflows. There are many kinds of large data processing tasks or on-demand computation tasks that scientists encounter which can be made much more scalable by effective use of cloud services. We'll look at more detailed examples of these in the Azure Cloud Services video. There are other patterns that you may encounter in your research. Virtual machines as a work environment in the cloud allows you to work on the same machine from the lab, the office, or at home. With many airline carriers now offering in-flight Wi-Fi, you can even log in and monitor your jobs and perform analysis from a small laptop while you're at 30,000 feet. Even if you're always working from a single place, being able to have a second workstation grinding away on a large Python, R, or MATLAB job can be very useful. With Azure, not only can you just get a machine whenever you want and only pay for how many hours or minutes it's turned on, you can actually allocate perhaps a more powerful machine than you normally have access to with much more RAM and disk. If you're happy with the workstation you have, VMs can still serve as a great testing environment. You can run multiple test data sets in parallel or run older versions of your code on a different machine than your primary workstation. You can use the Azure Storage Service to share your data in the cloud. While there are many file sharing services out there, if you really need to share multi-gigabyte data sets, there's nothing that is as cheap and as effective as directly using a cloud provider like Azure. In fact, many of the file sharing services themselves are backed by cloud providers. By using Azure in a more sophisticated way via persistent queues and tables, you can scale embarrassingly parallel workloads in a very cost-effective manner. You can even turn your parallel computation workflow into a web service that other people can leverage. Finally, Azure is a great way to publish reproducible simulations in the cloud. Others who want to evaluate your models or investigate your data may do so, and you only pay for the compute cycles that are actually used. This would be very expensive or unwieldy to attempt without using cloud, because you would need to go and buy new physical machines as more people try to run your software. In summary, Windows Azure provides a comprehensive set of services that you can use selectively to build applications. There is a globally distributed, robust, and highly available network of data centers. You can take advantage of this great hardware and only pay for what you use. There is no need to buy a large amount of computers that have to sit around idle, nor is there a need to not run some job or investigate some data set because you can't afford to buy that many physical computers. There are many different ways to use Azure, and you can choose what level of flexibility and configurability you like. Lastly, there are a number of well-configured, powerful computing services that comprise a very flexible and scalable framework. You can use whichever of these you need to power your scientific workloads. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned more about some of the core components and services that make up Windows Azure, as well as gained an understanding of some of the great ways that Azure can help researchers and scientists be more productive.